Okay, here we are in the next part of how to create a plan for a winning business. We've gone through all of what has to happen in order to have something to deliver to your customers in the market you choose and through the right channels and all that sort of stuff. We figured out how to finance it. And now we have actually launched the business. So we're for real. Aren't we? So we're done with planning, planning, planning. We're in now running this business. I call it operations. In the old days, we used to call this the operating plan of the company. This is a plan that's developed annually, reviewed quarterly, updated quarterly, based on what's happening with the business and what we learn about the market and, and what we're learning about the processes we use for all of our operational departments. We learn stuff as we go along. We get better as we go along, at least we hope to. We should purposely get better as we go along, as we learn what works and what doesn't. So this part is all about the operating plan, the operations of the business. So let's get right on into it. Of course, you've got to develop an operation, someone who runs it and is responsible for the development of a software product. They run it by a development process, step by step, from design, through coding, through, through testing, through customer testing. There's, there's a process for getting it done. <clears throat> it's got to be done efficiently. It's got to be done with high quality. These are things that are measured during the course of the development of a, a software product. Same goes for hardware. Engineering design, its output is the detailed specification for something you're going to manufacture. It's handed to manufacturing for them to then do their thing, figure out how to manufacture it. But whether it's hardware or software, there's a process that's managed by a top executive who runs this kind of by the numbers and the process they go through is rigorously adhered to. And the metrics that are learned from it are responded to with changes in the process. So if you have a development operation, you have to have someone running this who has a lot of experience in development. So I mentioned manufacturing before. This is, all right, now <laughs> we got the engineering drawings and the engineering design. Now we got to put together the actual manufacturing process. How is this going to go down a manufacturing line step by step? And the design and the development of this manufacturing process is a process in and of itself. Just as with software, there's metrics to meet with respect to manufacturing quality, manufacturing efficiency, manufacturing costs and cost reductions, things like that that are very operational and never ending. You need to get better and better as you drive costs down, efficiency up, quality up. Uh, and that's the name of the game in running manufacturing. So again, you have someone who's really experienced at this running it. So we're done planning for manufacturing now into the execution of manufacturing. So it gets real and this takes people, smart people that have a process for the manufacturing of the product you're going to deliver to customers. But the next thing that happens is once the product is manufactured, it goes into a warehouse or, or into a truck to a distribution center. From there, it's delivered to customers through a fulfillment process of some kind. And this too has, has it is a set of processes that have metrics that reflect the efficiency with which distribution occurs, the speed of it, the quality and the delivery of this to customers. So distribution is a very important element of, of the whole equation because without it, you don't get your products to your customer. So again, an, an experienced executive who knows all about distribution or how to manage distribution partners. You may not create your own distribution center. You, you contract with, with a distribution company that does all of the warehousing and distribution and has all of the software that manages the process so you don't have to do it yourself. You pay for it though. Then comes one of your favorites, right? Marketing. Marketing, as we already have talked about, has many challenges. The money you're spending is to reach potential customers, qualify them, and turn them into a sales lead to whom, to whom you sell your products and services. So marketing is also a process. It's run by metrics. It's, it's, it's efficiency is measured. How many leads you're getting per contacts you've made, things like that. Just like the other processes I've taken you through, 
the operating plan for marketing is a serious metric driven process. The results are how many leads do we got this week? And it better be a good number. The next logical thing to talk about then is sales. You, you need to have a sales process, a, a predictable way of getting a potential customer all the way through a sales presentation, all, answering all of their questions, making a proposal, negotiating the proposal, and then finally closing on a deal. Sales is also a metric-driven process. The old IT department, information technology, this is where all your computers are and all your, your, your networking infrastructure. It could be outsourced to another company, but somebody in your company is going to manage it. It's got to be up 100% of the time. That's their goal. Of course, it's 99.99 up. Every once in a while, a blip occurs. But IT is a very important function of your company because you think about it. If your internet is down, your company may be down too. The person running this has to have a lot of experience in managing information technology infrastructure. And it too has metrics that measure its quality, its uh, uptime, availability time, downtime, which you want to be a very small number. So there are all sorts of met metrics that are used to uh, manage the information technology. Customer support. If you're doing customer support right, you've got a lot of infrastructure for this. You've got online information. You've got online ways of answering questions. You've got videos coming out your ears and onto your website that inform people how to do things and using your product, supporting your product. You want as much customer support to be delivered to your customers that is easy to find, easy to use, and almost intuitive for them to figure out what to do next so that human beings don't have to be involved in answering the most simple questions and answering the, the or, or dealing with the simplest of issues that uh, customers could possibly run into. The person who's running customer support is very important to the company. It too has a process um, and, and defined levels of support and each level of support has a great deal to do with the complexity of whatever the issue is that they're dealing with. So you need to have a strong customer support person in your company dealing with customer issues. Finance is your green eye shades folks who keep the books for you, but also more importantly, provide information to the executives of the company on how the company is performing financially. Monthly basis, if not more frequently, Having information about things like cash flow, revenue growth, cost of goods sold, gross profit margin, net profit before tax, and the list goes on. These are metrics that you, the management of the company uses to make sure financially it's performing as expected. So having a good, strong finance executive running this stuff, it's not just a bookkeeper. It's someone who can provide solid advice to the executives of the company on how to make sure that the, the finance operation of the company is running smoothly and that the financial performance of the company is as they expected. There are all sorts of administrative functions of a company, usually held within the human resources department, but you've got employees. There are all sorts of things that have to be taken care of for employees. You may have benefits plans. You have policies within the company that employees have to adhere to. That needs to be explained to them. Employees invariably have issues they need to talk to someone about. The person in charge of administration and human resources is the one that answers those questions. Good, having a good administrative person is gonna help the company be in, be in compliance with labor laws and other, and other regulations having to do with the employment of people. So have, have a strong HR person either in your company or under contract with your company. So there you have it. This is all the things that go into the operating plan of the company. This is all operational stuff, day to day, managed by the top management of the company and executed by all the people of the company. We're working on delivering what we said we would in that business plan we created. Improvements are made as you learn more and more about how to operate the company more efficiently.
So there you go. Have a great operating plan. Manage it tightly. And have a good day.